for this image, I used the satellite image as an overlay and I started modeling everything from that. But that process previously was a little bit rough, right? Because the UV would always get stretched around. So let me walk you through how that file was set up before. So this is the working file for the image that you just saw. That image is still a work in progress. It's one of these projects that I have going on for quite a while. So I started cutting it around and moving things as they were needed to fit. However, the issue is that moving things from one object to the other it didn't work too well because of the UVs, right? So I had to use generated coordinates. So if we look at the setup for the material, you see everything is using generated coordinates. So that approach kind of works. The only trouble was I had to literally start from the satellite image, duplicate that and create all my other objects. Because you see here, the houses, they're also using the roofs and that had to be the copy of the same object without touching the scale so the generated coordinates stay in the same place. So it was a little bit of a tricky workflow. So let's check out that image in here again. So what I did is I imported the base image and I drew some cut lines. In the old way, if you wanted to move a vertex around, this is what happens. So this is with UVs, right? Everything gets kind of disgustingly stretched. We could move things around, but we were very limited. So the only thing we could do before is use vertex slide. So with vertex slide, so if I press G and then G again, you see we can move our vertex and it stays where it is. However, that's quite limited to where the current other vertices are located. So now with the new option, we don't need to worry about any of that. So in edit mode, if you open your tools and you under options, you may need to expand that and you select correct face attributes. And now let's try moving a vertex with G. And you see, we move it and everything stays in place. And this is gonna make architectural modeling from satellite images, what I do quite often, so much easier. So it's one of those features that again, in SketchUp, even in Rhino, it works like it does now in Blender, like it should. But finally in Blender, we can do the same and move on and have an easier time with our workflows. It also works if we go into knife. So let's go, I'm pressing K and let's create these houses here. So once I'm, I'm done, I press enter. We're gonna have a face. So I'm gonna duplicate that face, shift D, escape, and then P to separate selection. So now I'm going back into edit mode. Let's hide the big thing. And as you can see, our vertex selection still works pretty well. So now if I go back into edit mode, select a vertex and move it around, you see it moves, it works perfectly. We can even do something like this. So if I have these vertices, shift D, extrude. Well, that doesn't work quite well because it guess it doesn't know that the whole image is mapped, right? So if we wanted to do something like I just did, we'd probably want to extrude and then loop cut and get rid of this face here, right? Because when we start from the existing face set, it knows that those are connected. So we can move and continue with our refinement. So now let's say we wanted to do our road here or the other side of the park. So um, what am I doing here? Edit mode one. And we start with something like this. And then, yeah, let's do the road, right? So we have the road, then we just extrude. And the road not only stays in place, but we can really see what we're doing here, right? So that's one way. And the other way is, my preferred way is with this image, we go and we cut things the way we need to, to, start, to start building up our composition. Great little option, huge advantage potential for architectural design. Thank you for watching again. And if you want to get some of this merch, like these awesome Blender Architecture shirts, the link is below in the description. And if you find this video useful, make sure you smash the like button. See you next time.